an old favorite back by popular demand, my demand, Grandpa's Sweater Oatmeal Stout from Barnhammer Brewing in Winnipeg. Um, it is a really nice, smooth stout. And then we have all these male things interested to get into. What should I start with? Uh, oh, let's start with one of these envelopes, I guess. This one says SATA cable. Okay, that's uh, fairly straightforward. It's, well, sort of SATA cable. It's, let me get this out of here. It is um, the old style Molex power connector that uh, the, the old IDE uh, hard drives would have and splits out to two SATA power connectors. Um, I bought this when I was upgrading my editing PC. Um, I basically just replaced a, a couple of hard drives, added, added a hard drive, replaced one that was dying, um, and uh, upgraded the, uh, the motherboard and processor. But I didn't upgrade the power supply because it's still a, a way overkill honking power supply, which is awesome. S but it doesn't have enough connectors for all the SATA drives. So now I can power that up. 4-pin IDE male Molex to dual SATA Y splitter female HDD power adapter cable. One piece. I got this from this guy. Exusu391? Sure. Free shipping for 99 entire Canadian cents. Interesting that he uh, actually had it priced in Canadian cents. So this would be probably about, what, 75 or 80 American cents, something like that. Nothing much to say about it down here, just exactly what it is. It's a power splitter cable. Next in, we have modules times one. Like a good mystery module. What do we have here? So a key fob. Auto remote control key fob. Interesting. I'm assuming that this is going to communicate with just the... Uh, well, I don't know exactly. I was hoping... I was assuming that it would come with a receiver as well. Hmm. Let's check the listing and see if I just misread it or if they didn't ship the right thing. DC 12 volts, 433 megahertz, two button RF wireless remote control transmitter garage door. I got mine from Go In Electronics, who I've ordered a bunch of stuff from in the past. Um, I paid $1.31 for it. Unfortunately, or strangely, they don't have anything. Well, they got one thing listed on their sale page right now. They used to be a fairly huge seller. I'm guessing it's just because of the uh, New Year's, Chinese New Year's holiday. So they've emptied out their store and just paused everything until they get back. That's my guess anyways. Regardless, I will link you to this search here, which finds a whole bunch of other people that are selling it. And here is one of those uh, random sellers, one of the cheapest ones at the moment, which happens to be DIY Box that I bought from them before too. Um, but uh, yeah, they're selling it for two thirteen. I got it for dollar thirty one. Whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just a four thirty three megahertz uh, transmitter, which presumably sends two different serial number combinations or data combinations or whatever when you uh, push the buttons. That seems reasonable enough. Oh. This remote control is empty code. You need to set the code by yourself. If you don't know how to set the code, don't buy it. Looks like I've got some learning to do. So I did a little bit more th thinking, and I remember seeing a video from somebody. It might have been another maker. I, I, I channel called another maker, um, who was doing some stuff about these RF remotes. And if I remember correctly, it should transmit something that can be received by these little... 433 megahertz uh, units here. I can't remember which one of these is the transmitter, which one is the receive, but they should be able to, whichever one is the receiver, should be able to just receive the raw, uh, the raw 433 megahertz signal and dump serial data out to the Arduino for further processing. So that's what I think I'm going to use this for. I think that's what I bought it for. 
let's just take a quick peek inside. It, it talked a little bit in the listing about having to program it, which seems odd to me. Let me pop this thing open. There we go. So what do we got here? We have a little chip. We got a couple of push buttons, an LED, the little uh, RF or R433D can, which is similar to the little can that's on these things, a little three pin device. And that also says R433 on this one. Where's the other? That one doesn't, this one's got a slightly different chip on it than this one. This one says SCT2260. And that one just says LM358, which is an op amp. Okay, so I should be able to use that receiver there to receive this and uh, and demodulate it and and uh, Arduino to figure out what this thing is sending. Future project. Okay, what's next? An expansion board module. Popular choice. Oh. That's some little RF modules. Some little transmitter receiver pairs probably. They look very similar to what we just looked at, didn't they? Yeah, that is very similar. Almost identical to those 433 meg ones. Except, oh wait a minute. That one says 315. So it's the same sort of thing, just a different frequency. Okay. 1 slash 5 pieces, 315 slash 433 megahertz DC 5 volt RF transmitter and receiver module for Arduino Raspberry. Yeah, okay. Uh, from CZB 6721960. They are $1.31 each. I bought two of them for $2.62, which is the same price. And my order history confirms that I ordered two of them, but they sent me three. How nice of them. And I've done business with these guys several times too, so maybe they recognize that, or more likely they just slipped because, you know, they're cheap. This is like 99 cents American. Uh, distance, 20 to 200 meters. Okay, 315 megahertz, 4 milliamps. Receive current, which is bug roll. Uh, the transmitter transmits at 10 milliwatts. Uh, tra transmitter voltage, 3.5 to, to 12 volts. Okay. Uh, pinouts from the left, data VCC and ground. That's useful to know. All right, this could uh, this could come in handy. And so now it looks like I've got two different frequencies of these things. And these are both, the 315 and the 433 are both uh, unlicensed frequencies in most countries. There may be some countries that there aren't. Please check your local listings for more information. Now that I've had a few seconds to think about it, I remember why I ordered these. I've got these two remote controls, which I bought and they're paired with um, an AC voltage uh, relay, which are outdoor rated and I'm using outside for uh, one's got Christmas lighting on it and one's got the car plug on it. And I was thinking since these are that same 315 megahertz frequency, I may be able to hook the receiver here up to an Arduino and receive the codes for these, the two codes, the on and off code, and use an Arduino to control my remote control that they're lighting. Or put it on a timer based on an Arduino, something like that. That's, uh, that's my plan anyway. But that's probably going to be a project for coming up on winter next year because I'm I've already got everything set up for this year we'll see something to look forward to next thing is a connector huh oh okay bag after bag after bag these are some 3.5 millimeter audio jacks three pole that's an interesting configuration inside here you have the tip, the ring on that, and then the sleeve on there. That's fairly normal for a solder connection. But these two aren't something that I'm, I've seen much before. 
and there's no real strain relief so I'm gonna have to put some heat shrink in there but these seem like fairly solid auto connectors and yet yeah, they plug in nicely to uh, to my little mp3 player where's my other cheap mp3 player sure why wouldn't they okay that's reasonable enough how many have I got in there three replacement parts for when the kids break their headphones yet again three times 3.5 millimeter three pole mail repair jack plug stereo audio headphone soldering connector I got these ones from auto super dash parts who doesn't sell exactly that one right now but they do have the four pole version for the three of them I paid three dollars and 47 cents um, but since he doesn't have them I think I will link you to this search which finds a whole bunch of different varieties I've tried these ones before they're okay or this type but this is more like the ones that I got oh and they're significantly cheaper right now okay oh whatever I ordered these things months ago and now I got them so and now the last and largest thing it looks like it was somehow shipped uh, from China to some guy in Mississauga who reshipped it to me so I think some of these sellers are doing that for some of the larger things that are that sell fairly frequently they'll uh, ship a bulk of them to a warehouse and oh hey it's a unity ut210 meter I've been looking forward to one of these so this is the unity ut210 meter the cool thing about these ones is it's got the ammeter clamp which I mean I've got other other meters that have an ammeter clamp but this is one of the very few that can clamp both DC and AC currents so you don't have to interrupt the circuit to get a current reading I'll do a full play with this later but right now I'm just gonna pop it out and take a quick peek so it's got it comes in this little pouch here oh hey and it's got an extra set of leads too that's excellent two extra sets of leads wow are these cheap leads well we'll take a look at that in a minute the leads that come with it are relatively flexible the old dust caps on it that's kind of cool I mean it's not necessary but it's it's an attention to detail thing and the only other meters I've seen come with those on them I think is my is the fluke meters at work so here is the meter itself and I'm guessing it doesn't have a battery in it yeah what does it need a couple of AAA batteries okay just quickly toss these in these are just cheap ass uh, alkaline batteries from the dollar store but they'll get me going tonight so power on yes oh let's remove this thing here some people are real fans of this kind of activity I don't get it personally um, so right now it is in auto ranging mode the first is AC volts um, select now I'm on DC millivolts and back to AC volts okay um, next mode is capacitor check continuity diode check and impedance so right now it's in there's ohms uh, diode check volts nanofarads kilo ohms auto ranging oh that's uh that's ohms with the beeper the standard one is just resistance without the beeper okay I'll have to figure this out later so this is the two amps AC or DC and that's done up here in the clamp probe it can re it says it can measure up to a hundred amps and it's got a positive on one side and negative on the other side so that you can measure current flow in that direction or that direction and know which way she's going that's nice so if you have that clamped onto a batter onto the lead between a uh, power system and a battery you can tell whether the battery is currently being charged or discharged that's one of the handier things 
and multiple ranges too. So two amp range that's uh, claims to be able to measure down to milliamps. Um, then there's 20 amp range and 100 amp range. Then there's a non contact voltage. Hmm. You can see the this is centimeter grid down here. So. That's measuring it about three or four centimeters out. Okay. And you get right on top of it and it chirps at you. Well, that's neat. So the meter's got a built in chicken stick. That's handy. Unity UT210E digital clamp meter multimeter handheld RMS AC DC multi resistance. Would have been nice if they'd finished that. Buy now to get two test leads. Oh, yeah, and mine did come with two extra sets of test leads. Currently, they're selling it for $44.24, but when I purchased it, it was $46.88, and this was the least expensive seller with a reasonable reputation that I could find at the time. And uh, this came from A1 here in 1997. And that's, that's something that I look for when I'm buying something relatively expensive or when I'm buying it from somebody I've never bought from before. I always take a look at uh, their previous sales count and look for the little you know, positive feedback score thing um, just to see if they're relatively trustworthy, if they have a reputation that they can actually care about. So the range is here. AC and DC current up to 100 amps. AC and TZ voltage up to 600 volts up to 20 mega ohm resistance reading, 20 millifarad uh, capacitance, uh, 2000 counts. It's got a buzzer. Its jaws can open 17 millimeters. Diode test up to around three volts, which means it may or may not be able to do the white ones, uh, the white LEDs, and it can do some zeners and stuff like that, or any of the standard diodes. I think I'm going to have fun playing with this one. And, like I said, it's always handy to have another meter or two kicking around. Just take a quick look at these probes that came with it. These are not nearly as good as the actual ones that came with it. These ones that came with it are CAT 3 rated up to 1 kV and uh, 10 amp. These ones are nothing. And these have crappy little jacks on them. They're basically the leads that, that came with this crappy little meter, which you may recall was the, when I bought it, it was the cheapest meter available on Banggood. And, and given that providence, it's adequate meter. It does the job, but a couple of extra sets of test leads that are at best expendable. You never know when you're going to need that. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. As always, a cool assortment of stuff. Uh, let's just check the shipping times quickly. This guy took 15 days because it came from within Canada, so that's good. Uh, this cable took four weeks. The IDE power to SATA power. Um, the 315 meg uh, modules took three weeks. This four, was it 450 something? I can't even remember now. Um, transmitter module took four weeks to get here. And these connectors, where did it, they took six weeks to get here. I've, I've never been able to predict the shipping times from China. It's somewhere between three weeks and three months at worst. But uh, typically a month to a month and a half is what you, what I normally see to my part of Canada. Oh, I, uh. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters for helping me fund this. Um, there's a link down in the description if you want to join those uh, generous and friendly people. Well, that's, that's all for this week. I will talk to you again. Thanks for watching.